This video is entitled, So You Want to Learn to Use HTML and CSS, Chapter 1, Part A, Brief History. I'm Dr. James Renault from Shawnee State University, and I'll be taking you through this presentation. In this video, I'm going to give you a very quick history of HTML, Hypertext Markup Language, and I'll describe the four things, four things that make up a website, HTML, CSS, Cascading Style Sheet, JavaScript, and then the whole idea of a web server. So in 1989, a scientist named Tim Berners-Lee was working at the uh, European Research Center CERN, and he was uh, having a problem with documents, and everybody was formatting their scientific documents differently. And he wanted to come up with a way to put the scientific documents onto a server so that they could share them. But he wanted to do it in a way that they all were in the same format and that they could link between documents so that they could start creating a, a better knowledge base of the whole thing. And so he started and created this idea of hypertext markup language. In 1993, his work was published by the Internet Engineering Tax Task Force, the IETF, which is really the uh, main standards body of, of Internet, the Internet uh, switching, the Internet uh, just general functionality all comes through the IETF. So it was published in 1983. Three as a working draft by Tim Berners-Lee and his partner Daniel Connolly. Daniel doesn't get as much uh, um, credit, but he was very involved in the project. HTML2, which is a complete rewrite re re and, and modify and cleaning up of the code, was published by the IETF in uh, uh, 1995 which defines very much of the structure that we still use today. There was a structure called HTML 3.2, which came out in 97, which was the first standard published by the W3.org group, and added tables and a whole bunch of features that IBM, Microsoft, and Netscape wanted in the standard. As HTML continued to evolve in 1999, HTML 4.01 was released, and uh, it added scripting to the to the language, and also included something called style sheet. In 2000, all the way through 2010, there was a big push in HTML to move it to a new standard called XHTML 1.1 or 1.0. The XHTML standard got rid of some peculiarities within HTML and standardized it around the XML language. It actually made HTML a little bit more vigorous and a little bit more scientific and a little bit more exacting. And uh, a lot of people just didn't like it. And the standard never really took on. The 4.01 standard continued to live um, through the early 2000s. Back in 2011-2012, uh, in, uh, a group got together and created a new standard called HTML5. And we're now using the HTML5 standard now. The HTML5 standard took several years for everybody to finally agree to, and by 2017, the uh, recommended standard had been released. And by that point, most web browsers were using the HTML5 standard. The HTML5 standard, though, was the, the whole standardization process of having to wait years to get a standard through the process and through approval and through everybody agreeing to it kept getting in the way of fostering new great ideas. And in May of 2019, the W3 org that had been in charge of the HTML standard and the WATWG, W-H-A-T-W-G dot org, finally agreed that, you know what? We're going to quit this fighting HTML. We're going to quit fighting that there's one standard and we're never going to change it or we're going to change it very slowly. 
let's create something called the living standard. And so in May of 19, the HTML living standard was agreed to. And at this point, the living standard is whatever is published at the WATWG, W-H-A-T-W-G, org website. So HTML is continuing to evolve. Now, it doesn't evolve very quickly because all of the changes have to be agreed to by all of the folks that build web browsers. It also needs to go through a series of, of, of reviews and, and agreements because we don't just want to go adding stuff willy-nilly to the standard because that would make it difficult to, that would make it really difficult to use even, well, it's not difficult to use. You'll see that in just a few minutes. So we're going to be studying the HTML living standard. And throughout the book we'll be using this semester, you'll see footnotes linking you to the living standard at Watwig so that if you have any questions or if you want to look at additional things related to, to the material in the book, um, go for it. It's all right there with a the hyperlink. So I talked about HTML. You know, HTML is only one part of a website. This class goes into HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript. But um, what makes a website work are those three technologies working together. And you can see that in the Venn diagram here, that HTML, CSS, and JavaScript kind of work together. There's also dynamic content, which comes from servers databases, that type of thing. And there's a, 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 a system in the middle called the web server. And what the web server does is it gets the static pages, the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript that you write and develop. It gets the dynamic content, and it uses a computer programming language on the web server called the CGI language, like PHP or JavaScript is used on some, or Java, or C, or there are lots of different ways to, to make web servers do what they do. Um, so that's why I just generically called it the web server. But you see the static content that you create, the dynamic content from the databases, that's all brought together on the web server and delivered to the web browser. So you've got to make sure you understand how websites work. So I gave you a history of HTML, but I never really talked about what HTML is. Well, HTML is a way to mark up text. So what we do is we have a file that contains text in whatever language you're writing your web page in, English, French, German, whatever, Japanese. Um, and we put these tags, we put these markups within our text. And the web browser detects the markups and does things with the text. Kind of a neat idea. You can see that um, here in the middle, there's an example of an HTML statement. And the first line, the P tag, which you see the less than greater than letter P, um, stands for this is a paragraph. And the paragraph ends when you get the less than slash p greater than. So you can see the open tag doesn't have the slash. The close tag does. So that's a markup to mark up all of the text between those two tags as a paragraph. The next line you can see is, um, is the hr tag. The hr tag is a tag that doesn't have a close tag. It's a one-sided tag or a void tag, as, as it's sometimes called. Um, and hr stands for a hard rule. So it'll just put a line across your page automatically. Just put a line across your page. Um, so you separate the content, the words, the text from how it's presented. That's semantic. Semantics are the study of, of the structure, and so we're going to add structure to our text using HTML tags. All of the tags that we'll be studying are nested inside a pair of open HTML and close HTML tags. So you can see that at the beginning and end of every web page. And so let's keep, keep moving on, and maybe we'll see a real page in just a second.
Okay, but before we do that, let's talk about what CSS is. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet. HTML5 really codified and finalized the idea that we need to separate our presentation from the content of the page. Separate how it looks from the text and the semantics of what is there. Um, that's done by using another language called CSS, or Cascading Style Sheet. The great thing about CSS is that we can create one CSS file or one format of style and apply it to multiple pages. So if we create one CSS style, we can apply that single style to the whole website. And if we lay all of the pages out similarly, they'll all look the same, which makes it great. And if a client says, oh, well, what if we change this color? Well, all you have to do is go to the main style sheet, change it in one place, and it changes everywhere. Really, really nice. So the third part is JavaScript. And what JavaScript is, it's a, actually a computer programming language that allows for programs to be downloaded and run on your web browser. Now, JavaScript can can do animations javascript can do basic validation making sure you type the right things in the right place and the standard for javascript is published by a group called the ecma or the european computer manufacturers association sometimes you'll hear it referred to as ecma script um, JavaScript runs in browsers, on servers, on many game engines, and lots of other environments, but we'll just explore it a little bit as it's in an HTML page in a browser towards the end of the course. So, what is a web server? A web server takes requests from the web browser, so your web browser will send a request to the web server. The web server will then say, oh, I've got this request for this web page. Okay, and it goes and gets the web page. And the web page says, well, uh, I need this dynamic content. So it goes and gets the dynamic content. It mashes them together. The web page will say, oh, I need a picture too. Okay, and you need this and this. And then it sends it all back down to the web browser. Um, it may send an HTML file, it may send style CSS, it can send JavaScript, it can send images, files, streaming media, and all kinds of other things. Um, the server may use languages like PHP, Perl, ASP.NET, and Java. It can use databases like MySQL and Oracle and SQL Server and Postgres and lots of others. So, um, uh, configuring a web server and getting a web server to do what you want it to do is the is a context is is out of the context of this class. But um, if you want to look at that, um, there are other courses you can possibly take. This concludes the brief introduction and history of HTML. I'd like to say thank you again. This presentation is copyright 2020 by me. James Emrino, PhD. You can contact me at, at jim at renejm.com or jreno, J-R-E-N-E-A-U at shawnee.edu. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons, cre uh, Creative Commons non-commercial share-alike uh, 4.0 international license. And again, thank you for watching.